Hello and welcome to Tricks of the Estray channel. Today is the 15th of February 2017 and uh, today's um, video is about Marilyn Monroe. Now it may surprise you and you may be shocked because just like I, just like me, I was and I was deceived for a while thinking that I was, you know, and um, looking at a, a beautiful lady way back in the 60s. And just like um, everybody else, you know, males usually, um, we've lost it after Marilyn Monroe, thought the world about her. She was the perfect girl and everything else. But um, as I investigated, like I always say, found that, that the things on TV and the people on TV and not what you usually think they were. Now, as I've always said, I will always ask you to subscribe to the channel and that you should watch the Primer video. Look for the Primer video on this channel. And also look for the documents that's attached to every video we make. Download that, read it, right? And watch the Primer video and then so that most of the things that we talk about will be clearer and you will understand it because we're here to educate you because most channels don't do that like i say they either pass on misinformation or disinformation to you now to start this off um as i always say i'm not against anybody being transgendered all right even though it's a hoax because biologically you can't change yourself your body will still function with male DNA or female DNA and will never change. The skeletal structure will never change. So, for example, you know, a female who has an arch back can't change that. Neither will she be able to change her pelvis. And the male who has a straight back and heavier skull and longer shoulders across the body and longer arms can never change that. The skeletal structure will never change. But you know, when you uh, when you take males and you castrate them and you feed them hormones like estrogen to make them look more female, you take that right away because this is what I'm trying to tell you, to expose to you and to tell you that this is going on in a society today, right? And like I've always said, that I'm not against anybody being transgendered at all. And the only thing I'm against is that you're taking the right because like I always say, God has given us the rights to mess up your life. If you want to mess it up in any shape or form or live any kind of way, he's given you that choice. He will be the judge, not I. I don't judge people. You know, God will be the judge. So what I'm against is the fact that there is an organized institution running around the world. It's organized, that means they have their doctors, they have their physiologists, they have their clinics, they have their hospitals, they have uh, surrogacy centers, they have parents, they have finances, in, they have everything needed to make this business of taking babies, transgendering them at a young age, before they reach that age that they can make a decision for themselves and say, okay, I want to live this way or I want to be that way and taking that choice away. This is what I'm trying to expose. And like I've always said, the people at the top of this, the people who are in control of this, the hierarchy which runs and controls this is the Vatican. Now, um... Like I've always said, that part of the reason, the reason that, uh, like I've always, I always tell this history. If you go back, way back in history, the reason for the castration of children was because kings and queens were trying to protect their thrones. They were trying, they had a problem of trust, of who they could trust so that the family line could continue on, all right? And so they would take children, right? And castrate them so for example like I've always said when you castrate a man you take his rights the ability for him to function as a normal human being in the world so when that happens he can live as a male 
you've taken that right away. He can live as a female either because he can bear children. So when that happens, you have to create an alternate reality, a false sense of reality, a false perception of the way the world works for these people to thrive in so they can be able to function. So whatever false sense of reality that you create will be the reality that these children will live. It becomes their life. So that's why they were made so that they could be better like gatekeepers or protectors of the throne. They were servants, political appointees. Then later on, with the advent of art and music, after discovering that these castrated children grew uh, in an unnatural way such that they had greater lung capacity to make music and vocals, a lot of families, right? started to take their children and do this also to them in the hopes that they would be rich, just like the ones they saw. And the Roman Catholic Church was always at the hands of this. So a lot of people might say, okay, it's the Illuminati that runs the world. But nobody has ever told you this, that the Illuminati is the Roman Catholic Church. Now, this is a Wikipedia page that I'm showing right here. And as you look at this Wikipedia page, it's talking about Adam Weishaupt the the person who was uh given like the um, who started the illuminati in short right now if you go to the official page because i just wonder how people go through this right and don't read they don't see what's in writing they just listen to what everybody else says without actually doing the study from themselves now i'll read this page from wikipedia adam's wife's her early life i'll just follow my mouse okay now you could see right here it says Adam Weishaupt was born on 6 February 1748 in Ingolstadt in the electorate of Bavaria, which is present day Germany today. Weishaupt's father, Johann George Weishaupt, died, and the year he died was 1717 to 1753. When Adam was five years old, after his father's death, he came under the tutelage of his godfather, Johann Adam Frey von Ingstadt, who, like his father, was a professor of law at the University of Ingolstadt. Ingstadt was a proponent of the philosophy of Christian Wolf and of the Enlightenment, and he influenced the young Weissop with his rationalism. Now listen, to this is the part that gets interesting. Weishaupt, right? began his formal education at age seven at a Jesuit school. That means a Vatican school, a Roman Catholic school. He later, he later enrolled at the University of Ingolstadt and graduated in 1768 at age 20 with a doctorate of law. The University of Ingolstadt was a Jesuit university. Just like we have Georgetown University in the United States today, right? In 1772, he became a professor of law at the University of Ingolstadt. The following year, he married Afra Son Sonhova of Eichstadt. Now, it also says, after Pope Clement's XIV suppression of the Society of Jesus, right? I want you to listen to this. It's telling you that a Pope tried to suppress the Society of Jesus, which is the Jesuits, in 1773. Weishaupt became a professor of canon law, a position that was held exclusively by the Jesuits until that time. It's telling you here that Weishaupt became a professor of canon law at the University of Ingolstadt, and this position was held exclusively by Roman Catholics. Jesuits mean here Roman Catholics, the Vatican until that time. All right? So when you look at this page, it clearly shows you, because the Roman Catholic Church has never for one day said, okay, we denounce Weissop in any way. Here is the official page clearly showing you who Adam Weissop was. That he was a Roman, Roman Catholic paid Jesuit, paid to do the work of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, the reason why the Illuminati, one of the reasons why the Illuminati was uh, 
installed was because, like I said, during the Reformation, of way back in the late 1400s up to the early 1500s, uh, late 1400s leading up to the 1500s, right? When uh, people like Martin Luther uh, uh, posted his thesis on the Catholic door, claiming that uh, the Pope does not go preach the word of God, is not of God, and that certain so many things that they were doing, it broke the Roman Catholic ranks. Because prior to that time, the Pope had controlled all um all the noblemen all the kings and queens in europe and around the world was held firmly in their grasp so when this happened when the reformation happened a lot of kings and queens decided not to go under the under the rulership of the pope anymore they decided to be protestants because that's what the reformation did it caused protestantism right so when that happened the pope or the Vatican was always at war trying to bring back the kings under its control. So one of the principles of the Illuminati was to destroy all monarchies. When he says all monarchies, he is talking about all monarchies that are not in subjection to the Pope. Now, that makes me to uh, add something else that a lot of people don't know. This, most monarchies in the world have been destroyed. The monarchies that you see today, the royal families, in wherever you see them today, are not the original royal families that existed. They have been replaced in some shape or form. And most of them, have, if you notice, if you do an investigation on the royal families, you find that they are transgendered. So like I said, way back in the day, one of the reasons for transgendering people was to make them serve as servants, to make them serve, serve as political appointees to kings and queens because they did not have any royal line. They couldn't bear children. So all they could do was live the life that was given to them. So they were like gatekeepers, servants to the kings. So if most royal families today do, out, do your own investigation and you find that a lot of them are transgendered, whether it be the king of Sweden or the family, the royal family of Britain or whatsoever, just, just go and do your own investigation. You have the documents here to show you how to investigate. You'll find out that they are transgendered. That means that according to what the Pope and the Illuminati, which is one and the same thing, had planned, they have transgendered these people. So what you're looking at are not really kings and queens. They are just stooges under the Roman Catholic tutelage. And that's what it is. So, I know I've been um, rambling a lot, but let's get straight into um, the main reason for the day, which is uh, Marilyn Monroe. Now, here's a picture of Marilyn Monroe. As you can see, as I'm moving my mouse right over here, you will see that she has a very wide neck. Because men have wide necks to support the heavy skulls. They have wide necks because it's basic architectural design. If you have something heavier on top, you have to have a wider base to support it. You can see that she has a wide neck. And you can see that an appearance of an Adam's apple here. So I'm thinking prior to this, this Adam apple wasn't shaved off by surgery. All right? Okay? So take a look at that and, and follow my mouse. And as you can see, if you look at her elbows, the angles she creates at the elbows, these are angles that men create because the elbows at, 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 at a, a man's elbow is usually very, very sharp because men create angles everywhere all over their body, square angles, all right? Now, I take very seriously what I do. I'm not just going to come up here and call someone a tranny. I'm not like one of those channels over there who calls or labels everyone a tranny so you don't get it confused. I show you facts. I created a document for you to read as well. So do that and also watch, look for, like I said, look for a primer video and watch the Zayn Malik video as well and download this document and read and you get to the point of what I'm saying. So let's move forward in Marilyn Monroe, okay?
Now, here's another picture of Marilyn Monroe showing you the strange angles that she creates around her shoulders, which is usually a man's shoulders. Men create this kind of angles around their shoulders. And as you can see right here, she has deep set eyes because men have an eyebrow ridge. The eyebrow ridge is like a cap over their eye because the man's forehead is usually long and slopes. So it slopes in such a way that it causes a ridge that looks like a cap, right? Now, let's look at another picture here. You can still see the eyebrow ridge right here. So let's go forward. Here's another picture. As you can clearly see, a female's eyes will never be like this. You can see the eyebrow ridge right here. The ridge over the eyes, all right? Let's go forward again. Another picture. Now, usually men have, like I said, a wider width of the back because the, uh, because the shoulders are longer. So, and it takes more muscle to support the shoulders. So the width of the back from the side angle when a man stands, all right? is gonna be a lot more wider. Now let me show you what I mean from picture here. So you can tell what I'm saying. Now, here is a man's back from the side. If you see this diagram over here, for a female you will see that she has an arch. The arch goes right deep inside the back and comes out, right? Into her butt area. With a man, you will see more back from the side. As you can see this right here with this diagram. You see more back, more back here, width. And it goes straight down into the pelvis. All right? Let's go back to Marilyn Monroe again. So as you can see right here, she has more back from the side. And there's no arch in that back. It's a straight back going right down into a pelvis. Another picture. Now, this is a picture that's showing like the eyebrow ridge, very clearly as you can see right here. This is an eyebrow ridge on Marilyn Monroe. Show you another picture. Now look at these knees right here. Men have more kneecaps, right? If a female were to stand like this, especially in heels, you wouldn't see these knees this way. So men have more kneecap. You can divide the kneecap like into two, right? With a female, you won't see that. And one of the tricks of being a tranny, uh, in which a tranny will try to, like, you know, show that she has an arch in her back is to uh, wear heels. So when she wears heels and stands like is leaning forward, it will give you a, like some sort of, you know, simulation or some sort of uh, facade that there is an arch in her back when she doesn't really have one. OK, now let's look at another picture. Look at the angle she creates with her knees. Right. Follow my mouse and just watch. Look at the angles she creates around her knees. Those angles are the angles of a female of a man's knees and not a female. Right? Now, I will try to attach a link of a video here of a Snickers ad that was made with Willem Dafoe um, acting like he was Marilyn Monroe. Now, you might somebody might watch that ad and just say, oh, it's just a funny ad. He can't be Marilyn Monroe. But Hollywood knows how to tell you the truth in mockery, right? So they were they're mocking you to show you that they knew that Marilyn Monroe was a dude all along. So that's why Willem Dafoe played that role. So when he when he was mad and angry, they would talk to him and say, like, you know, you're mad and angry, a man. Have a Snickers. And then when he ate the Snickers, he turned into Marilyn Monroe. I'll try to attach that link of that video right here just to show you. Now, I want you to see how large Marilyn Monroe's hands are. All right. A man's hands, right, is usually so large that it covers it almost covers the whole length of the face and leaves all but just like a quarter out. Now, let me show you a pic of that so you can understand what I'm saying more. Now, here is the pic, all right? So here is a man's face, all right? Here's a, a man's face and here's a woman's face. A man's hand will totally cover almost the length of his entire face because men have large hands. So when you, if a man carries hands towards his face, 
You can do this experiment right here towards his face. It's almost gonna cut. It's almost gonna cover the whole length of his face. If a female does that, it's gonna leave like a quarter of the face out or more with a female's hands, showing you that Marilyn Monroe right here has man's hands. I'll show you more pictures as we go along. I want you to take a good look at the hands right here, right? Can you see how big it is compared to the face? If she pulled her hand up to her face, I still have pictures to show you. You would see that it covers almost the whole entire length of the face, all right? And you could see how broad the shoulders are, right? And the neck region and how the muscles are so well developed, right? And you can see the wide face. But let's move further, right? Now, here's a picture of the hands that I was talking about. Can you see how large the hands are? Take a good look at this. The hands are so large, it covers the whole entire face. Just like I said, a man's hands must appear. If a, Like I said, you can do this experiment if you're a man. And do the same experiment if you're a woman. If you put your face on, if you put your hand on your face, if you're a woman, it's not going to cover the whole length of your face. But with a man, it's going to cover the almost the whole entire length. The most it will leave will just be just a little bit. All right. Uh, more pictures now. Let's go ahead and move it forward. Take a look at the hands and how large they are. All right. You can see that. Take a look at the hands again. She, she's holding a cigarette right here. See how large these hands are. They'll cover the whole entire face. If she spread her, if she moved her palms up to her face and spread her fingers up, just like I showed you in the uh, previous picture, you will see that it covers the whole entire face. And look at how straight down the face is. Man's face are usually squared out. Look at how straight the down is. Right from the ears straight on down. She has a large skull. Let's move forward. Picture of the hands again just to show you. Large hands covering almost the entire face. Let's move forward. Picture again of the same hands again. See how large the hands are? See how see how she creates angles, square angles all over, like at the elbows and everything else. And one thing that, you know, uh, uh, male trannies do. So when I want you to take note of this so you can know uh, uh, tricks of the trade, right? Uh, everybody has three false ribs. Those false ribs are not directly attached to the sternum of the body. They call them floating ribs. So with most trannies, they will take out those ribs to give it. Uh, to give the shape, the contour of the body, a more hour glass figure. And then they'll pad the hips with surgery and put on more hips. So whenever you hear like a, in the news or say that a female is taking out her ribs, most likely it is a male. So I'm just throwing that out there so you notice. Okay? So let's go forward. I want you to take a good look at the hands, right? Those are large hands. Take a good look at the wide neck. Can you see that? Can you take a look? It Something is going on in the neck area right here. And look at, it looks like the trapezius muscles are well developed as well. Because men have well developed trapezius muscles to be able to uh, carry the longer shoulders and heavier neck. I'm sorry, and heavier skull that men usually have. Because a man's brain is larger than a female. So the skull is heavier. All right. Let's go forward. Now, let's take a look at the back. Remember, I told you that men have more back when standing from the side. And as you can see right here, Marilyn is leaning back to make to give you the deception that she has an arch right here. But it's not. The back is straight up and down. And let me show you how a male's back should look again. So you can see what I'm trying to tell you. Here's a picture of a male's back. See that? There's more back width from the side when you look at a male. And see how it goes straight up and down, right into the spine, right? Right, in, right back directly into the pelvis, sorry. Straight up and down, right into the pelvis. There's no arch, there's no dip. For a female, you would have a dip right here from the shoulders. It will start twisting in. Then it will start coming out just above the navel and out into the pelvis, giving that S-shaped spine a curve. 
So a woman would have an arch in her back, an S-shaped spine, so she could carry the weight of pregnancy, of making children, of babies. A man has a straight back because he doesn't need it. All right. So if we look at Marilyn Monroe's back here, it's pretty comparable to the picture that I just showed you. She's just leaning backwards, trying to give the appearance that there is a curve. If she stood up straight, right? And this is one of the tricks of the trade in a tranny. They'll always try to be twisting and turning so to give the body some sort of shape, a curve like a female. But at the end of the day, the skeletal structure doesn't change. So you can see it's a straight back, straight down into the pelvis. The only difference is like she's leaning backward or he's leaning backward, trying to make it look like he has a curve in here when it, there's nothing. All right. Let's go further. More pictures. See the straight back again here. Now, the trick is like you can see that she's standing with the tip of her toes, raising herself up and she's wearing heels to give the body some sort of contour, right? Like there's an arch in the back. But you can see the more width back here, more back width, and that these go straight up and down, just like the picture that I showed you over here. See that? Straight up and down, more back. You see that now? All right, let's go further. See the angles he creates with the shoulders, right? This is the angle that men create with their shoulders. A, a woman doesn't create angles like that. It's going to be soft and suppler because she has, you know, a shorter shoulder length, right? Look at that, why wide the collarbones are, right? More pictures. You could see the well-developed trapezius muscles here. Because males have well-developed trapezius muscles, and well-developed necks to support the heavier skulls, longer shoulders, and heavier bones than men have. Right? Can you see that? You can see also the eyebrow ridge right here. Okay? More pictures. You can see how straight the back is. If you're a female, if you did this, you would have a deep arch in your back. Your back would go into an arch and come out here towards your pelvis area. But as you can see, it's a straight back. And look at all the angles she's creating. The angles are not feminine at all. They're angled, like just like a, man's, a man would do something. Angled, you know, in squares. In triangles, in squares. All right? More, more pictures. Look at the hands. Look at the well-developed neck. Right? You see that? And see the eyebrow ridge right there? Okay. Let's move further. Look at the hands, how huge the hands are. Look at how square the shoulders are, right? Because men usually have square shoulders. And look at the neck, well-developed neck to support the heavier skull. More pictures. Look at the more back, right? More back width in the back when a man stands from the side. Look at how developed these arms are. Like it has a lot of muscular strength. Look at the eyebrow ridge, okay? And look at this again, just like I showed you. When a man stands from his side, you will see more back. The reason being that the shoulders are broader and longer. And there is no arch in this back for a female. It's straight up and down. A female has an arch back or S-shaped spine that will curve like that because she needs it to support the weight of pregnancy, of carrying children, all right? Let's go further. And here the trick, you can see the back right here. See the width of the back? This is the um, um, uh, uh, the video that this, I was talking about with the sneaker ad in which Willem Dafoe uh, is a dude wearing this dress. And when he's hungry, he's wearing this dress. And when he eats the sneaker, he turns into Marilyn Monroe, showing you that Hollywood knew that Marilyn Monroe was a dude. I'll try as much as possible to attach a link in this video uh of that sneaker ad so you can watch it on youtube you can just do a google search and you'll find it see that see the width of the back just like i had showed you again here how a man's back should be when he's standing from the side you see more back because the back is straight there is no s-shaped spine or arch in the back to hide the back inside from the side does it make sense you see what i'm saying now okay let's go further we have more pics. We're not done yet. See the straight back here? 
There's no arch in that bat. He's just leaning forward. So as he's leaning forward, right, it makes it look like there is an arch, but there is none. The arch, you could see a very deep arch below the shoulders, from the below the shoulders down. And then it starts coming out right here, just above a, a, a navel and into her, into her pelvis. Now she did a lot. He did a lot of plastic surgery to add some fat behind here. So when you look at this, and you say, "Hmm, it's a thick behind. That must be a female." No, you're looking at a dude. You're looking at a straight up dude. More pictures. See the well developed trapezius muscles here. Can you see that? See how well developed the tra tra trapezius muscles are. That's because, like I said, the trapezius muscles well developed to support the wide neck which is supporting the very heavy skull of a man and the shoulders more pictures see how developed the neck is so strong neck to support the heavier skull than men usually have can you see that all right let's go further still see that neck that wide strong neck to support the heavier skull you see that all right let's go further wide neck again i had to make a lot of pictures because i want to show you facts like i said i take this seriously i can't just come out and call someone and need something that is not i take this seriously because i don't i wouldn't want anybody to do that to me so i want you to take a look you see that no pictures and i think i've come to the end of my presentation so like i said you know um don't be fooled, right? Don't be fooled anymore. Do your study so you can know the difference. Because the world is going coming to a place in which you have to be able to distinguish between male and female. There's so many transgendered people around. Because the Vatican, the people of the hierarchy, the people at the top, your politicians, right? Your executives, your presidents your religious people doesn't matter if the president is a muslim or christian on television or whatsoever because a lot of people don't even know that muslim that being muslim is a rom it's being roman catholic the people at the top i mean like the sheikhs the imams know that because there's so so much similarity between between roman catholicism and Mus being a muslim or islam because the roman catholic church created islam because, for example, a Roman Catholic carries a bead, prays with a rosary, right? And so do Muslims. They pray with some sort of beads, which is the same thing as rosary. They, they have the same saint, Saint Fatima. They worship at the same saint. Also, Muhammad's wife, Khadija, if you want to do, go into history and really study and read, Khadija was a Roman Catholic nun, right? Rome... Vatican, you know, the Vatican uh, created Islam. They created Islam because they wanted to control the Arab world so they could control Jerusalem because the Arabs had taken over Jerusalem. And the wars and the crusades couldn't bring Jerusalem back to them. So they had to find a way to control the Arab world. The people at the top, the hierarchy of Muslims know that. It's only lay people the lay Muslims, like the average Muslim who thinks he's a Muslim who doesn't know that, right? Just like Roman, a lot of Roman Catholics don't know that they're not worshipping the God of the King James Bible. It's a facade. It's the same thing. So do you study, like I said, on everything that I've said. And stay tuned to this channel. Subscribe so you can get more videos. And know that whatsoever I tell you is truth with facts. So with that said, I'm sorry for a lengthy video on this one, but I just had to say it like it is. And so I'll stop the video here and say thank you and stay tuned.